So contempt is criticism on steroids. This is what John Gottman calls sulfuric acid for love. Nothing will erode a relationship quicker than contempt. Contempt is when you are looking at your partner from a superior position. So you are eye-rolling, you are name-calling, um, there's a mockery, mocking, even physical mockery, um, imitating them, imitating their voice. Contempt is meant to just take the legs out from your partner, make them feel pathetic, ridiculous. Um, and it it can be abusive, but um, most people have engaged in contempt at some point in their relationship. Lower level would be sort of the eye rolling, but that is the biggest predictor of a split. If you allow yourself to think yeah, that mockery or contempt, just a little bit. It's like this weird slippery slope. Sure is. And the opposite is true, where I just look at a person and think, wow, isn't that the most like wonderful creature I've ever seen in my <laughs> life? Like, just think that. And you notice That's the little lovely. details about who they are. Mm -hmm. And so I just observe them the way you observe like a weird like peacock at a zoo or something like Intention that. Intention is powerful, isn't it? Yeah, and it changes. It change. You start to notice yeah. beautiful things, and then let uh, the things that annoy you. Yes. Like just. You're exactly right. You're touching on some dissipate. really important things. So, in relationships, we actually know that wearing rose-colored glasses is important. It's healthy. We need it, um, and it's a choice you're making, right? So, there is a saying that. Uh, getting married is just choosing one person's faults over another. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that we may become infatuated with somebody else as human beings. Love is an emotion. Attraction is emotion, an emotion. And as you go through life, even if you're in a committed relationship, you might see beauty in another. And that person who is novel might seem attractive to you. But if you can remember that they too have a set of problems that you would be marrying it really helps you to see the beauty in your partner again mm -hmm. and recognize all of their incredible strengths and all the ways we meld with the person and become our own family, almost become, I mean, our lives intertwine and we grow those oak trees. So to, by the way, there's a line I read somewhere that uh, when you're wearing rose-colored glasses, all the red flags look just like flags. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I a good it's a good line. I love uh, so you so you think that humans are fundamentally all of us are fundamentally flawed or have flaws. They're unique flaws, and that mm -hmm. basically relationships is just a way to um, figure out how the two can fit together. Right, and we're different. So no matter what, we're going to have differences. We yeah. are raised differently than our partner. We have different stories, different experiences that shaped our value systems, especially when it comes to the big ones like parenting, love, money, um, th these principles that are based in our history. Um, we're going to have differences. So are, is this a set of differences you can accept from somebody and work with? Do the benefits and do their strengths, um, do they make it worth it? Or is it are they deal breaker differences?